Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm privileged to welcome a very senior marketing and branding guru from Mumbai, India, Mr. Umesh Rikhande. Umesh, welcome to the show. So much. Uh, Umesh is the founder of New Answers Advisory, and he's the former chief executive officer of Taproot Dent Soup. So Umesh, before we talk brands, tell me about your own journey and what got you into advertising? Well, in no particular order, but uh, between spending all my time thinking and researching versus getting things done, I think I was more comfortable with the getting things done part, mm -hmm. which kind of attracted me to a managerial zone, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, I did my BA in sociology and then honestly on a lap just gave an entrance exam where I was fortunate to get through and uh, that's how I joined Bajaj. Mm -hmm. uh, so you arrived from the same institute? Yes, same mm -hmm. institute, no, 82 okay. to 84. Hmm. Okay, so I'm senior. I'm 77, 79. Okay, okay. Hmm. So uh, after uh, the two years were over on a placement, I thought uh, I might be better off if I did a sales job for at least a couple of years hmm. to get on ground realities and all that, which I had heard that's a good and better thing to do instead of jumping straight into a desk job. So I did that with Volters for a couple of years as the area sales manager in various yeah. parts of the country. And then uh, talking to some friends and a couple of other people who've been in advertising, I thought this is something I would like because yeah. not that if you like the arts or you like music or my educational background was sociology, BA, mm. uh, then you're better tuned for advertising. I wouldn't say that. But the context is always rich and full of all kinds of multidisciplinary things going on. Hmm. So if that gives you joy, then there's merit in heading there. Correct. Uh, also, the conversations in most creative businesses for the uninitiated start on a very divergent note. And somewhere along the line, they come on track hmm. and then they conclude. Right. Now, not everyone is comfortable with that process. Hmm. If I got an outsider airdropped into a room with a meeting going on like this, he might think these are a bunch of scatterbrains going all over the place. Hmm. So, some amount of things of what I like, I I I like a buzzy workplace. I like a lot of interaction. I lot of, lot of spending time with people. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a pain. I think it's a wonderful opportunity, and I I have learned quite a lot from my colleagues, juniors, clients, all of them. Yeah. Uh, but that is because I was keen on this conversational bit. So that's what I got into advertising. Fascinating. Uh, first five, six years, like in all professions, was on the treadmill and working late hours and uh, learning the nuts, screws and bolts of the business. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, uh, I started enjoying it. Uh, Working with creative people is a great idea, mind opener. And for MBAs who don't waste their time worrying over the fact that creative are the most important people in the business, mm -hmm. uh, it's a great idea because not out of modesty, but out of pragmatism, you must mm -hmm. understand that the creative people in this business are primary, are more important, are mm -hmm. critical. Question is, for people of my background, are we simply envelopes for them or ladders for them or what are we? Mm. Uh, and that is a interesting learning over the years, which is, I may not be 100% right, but I'll say it nevertheless. Mm. In If I was the CEO of a IT company or a manufacturing company, machinery, technology, Mm. chances are that with a large client I would meet their CFO or CTO uh, at best mm. 
in advertising strangely because the expenditures are huge because they're linked directly to the brand and therefore perceptually to their fortunes mm -hmm. our conversations are invariably with marketing directors or ceos or mds mm -hmm. now the point is not designation point is this business allows you to have a freewheeling discussion unlike other businesses mm -hmm. no question is off the table mm -hmm. i can connect any dot and ask the client any question about the past future present whatever i can talk about organizing culture i can talk about people i can talk about budgeting i can talk about anything besides advertising which is mm -hmm. anyway the focus mm -hmm. which collectively if you if you like this engagement then what most people miss is advertising gives a opportunity to get a ringside view of how companies are run correct and in that context learning about brands and working towards building brands Mm, fascinating like the business of brands yeah and uh, not to sound like a good boy but uh, clients like you or one at itc mm. uh, have serious levels of deep domain expertise mm. and such conversations the ability to have it and indeed the opportunity to have it is a is a big privilege because you don't get a close audience with such people all the time Correct. and it's the fair amount of time spent right so learning about the organization learning about how they plan things learning mm -hmm. about how they operate in turbulent times uh, it's it's fascinating so right. that's right. what got me to stay there mm -hmm. uh, so creativity people conversation uh, collectively have taught me a lot mm -hmm. Uh, and i enjoyed the time because every day at work someone is telling you something new yeah something they've seen something they've read something they've observed uh, there is some new angle to the brand so there is a lot of newness going on and within I agree. that but let me let me interrupt you and ask you you know i think it's there is a the whole new perspective on how important is storytelling right. when it comes to building a brand and you very kindly told me about how you get to meet all these senior guys in marketing and get their perspective how important is storytelling and how can an agency craft stories that resonate so storytelling like many things in management uh, people are i think more comfortable when you give something a label mm -hmm. and then it's bandied around and used often but in my uh, view storytelling is not a new thing not an alien thing Absolutely. it's a very organic thing mm -hmm. which has always been around wherever there are human beings mm -hmm. so if you have to persuade your family about buying a new property or shifting your address or shifting cities for a job or whatever mm -hmm. you surely can't drop a bomb in the lap and just announce it that tomorrow yeah. we are headed to whatever city mm -hmm. right you have to give them the back story you got to tell them the challenges you need to tell them what they can look forward to so it's a bit of a negotiation discussion to gently persuade and convince someone about your point of view great mm -hmm. right. that is that is really what storytelling is about very well said and now, what is your perspective on on culture uh, when it comes to storytelling yeah. because in a country as big as india which is so culturally diverse how do you weave culture in storytelling right uh you know how much it gets played up and used is a matter of detail mm -hmm. but culture once again is a very very integral cannot be ignored part of communicating with people correct because the way we are uh, hardwired mm. we uh, like to know the zone in which things are operating the context in which things are operating mm -hmm. we like to know what is it that you resonate with mm -hmm. what is it that you don't resonate with 
so uh, you necessarily in the process of giving a convincing context around the problem or the solution will tap into nothing but the socio-economic uh, situation around the brand and around that consumer's life. Correct. That's what culture is. So for mm. instance, for Facebook, uh, we had done a commercial which uh, showed a small town mom uh, suddenly talking about speaking to many friends of hers from the past. Mm -hmm. And a daughter says, suddenly where this come from and how do you manage? Mm. There's Facebook. Mm. Uh, and meanwhile, in the film, you see the husband cooking because the wife is busy on Facebook. Amazing. Hmm. Now, this is this is a use of or leveraging cultural realities that are staring at our face. Hmm. It's not a concocted thing. Yeah. Right. It is becoming commonplace for men to work in the kitchen and women to be busy with something else. Uh, it's it's also evident that this new digital era is affecting not just the top metros or anything, but they've gone deep and wide and everyone seems to be affected. Mm. So that is, uh, you know, these new trends that come into culture. I mean, the obvious one on culture, which is if it's the Onam festival or if it's the Ramzan festival, then you show accordingly, you show a mm. prop and symbolic uh, mm. suggestions and all that. Yeah. That goes without saying, but the nuanced ways of how civilized people evolve and deal with things mm -hmm. is what really culture is about. And you have to lean on it and feed into it because that gives the ecosystem, if you like, to the listener or the viewer or the consumer. Mm -hmm. To find enough matter in it which persuades. Very because well said. If it's plucked out of Finland or something where I don't know how they live and what they do, yeah. mm -hmm. a conversation between a father and son in some other country would be very different because it sings to a very different tune. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong. Father son yeah. relationships remain important, but how they, uh, along the way, exploding myths also becomes an issue. Uh, because not everything part of our past or part of our heritage or part of culture is future ready. Mm -hmm. uh, and to well that said. extent... Uh, well said. But you know, you just spoke, uh, Umesh, about Facebook. And so I want to use that as uh, a segue to my next question, which is that, and you've seen advertising creative uh, people over the last several decades... How has or how is the digital revolution beginning to change agencies and the way brands are being built? Yeah, that's a slightly longish answer and I don't know how many people agree with me, but uh, here it is. Uh, that it's a completely new force and a new dimension to what we do and how we do business mm -hmm. is beyond doubt. Mm. It's a huge force. It comes with opportunities, comes with challenges, mm. and we ignore it at our own peril. Mm. So uh, that's clearly here to stay. So mm. there's no point in negating it and saying that it's not upon us. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to communication, perhaps mildly digressing, but I think it mm. needs to be said to make the point. Mm. Uh, for the longest time now, the creative business could do with some amount of openness and independence from the client's end. Mm. Uh, if the permanent tone of your buyer is to say any color is okay so long as it's black, mm. uh, then it pretty much reduces your option and your cornered into a wall and you do what is expeditious, mm. not necessarily what is right. Mm. So digital has been a huge force, has been a new wave of media opportunities how to get in touch with the consumer. Mm. 
it has brought in a lot of real time dimensions because you can you can say it now unlike earlier when i had appeared today and four days later someone made a phone call mm. everything is instantaneous and so on mm. but specifically speaking about communication the the unsaid and unspoken noise surrounding this which suggests that now the time for creative communication is over mm. i have severe disagreement with that mm -hmm. because there is no way the role of preeminence of ideas is going to reduce in society absolutely in fact even as we speak looking at the wacky bizarre weird content floating around on the net mm -hmm. it's nothing but entertaining and nothing but uh, creative creative right mm -hmm. so to the digital communicators now it's of course settling down a little bit it's still early days but they created this impression that in the digital world all of us have turned into left brained individuals mm -hmm. that we only understand logic we only understand peddling we only understand reminders mm -hmm. and nothing could be further from the truth because when i mean as 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 a as one of the barometers if you look at a bollywood film and with a certain storyline which has nothing to do with the digital era mm -hmm. if it's finding huge resonance with the millennials it tells you a story that it is not like they do not want persuasive messages but you have decided that uh, we will only bore them with facts and mm -hmm. it is now coming home to roost because many clients years ago there were reports how procter and gamble and some other globally scaled down their expenses because they were not getting enough returns from it mm. so using technology because you now have the ability to use it is one thing using it as a wonderful piece of ammunition that allows creativity to breathe and gets you to do things much faster quicker smarter and get you to the goal post faster that's that's what uh, yeah. it is because Great response but uh, you know another perspective i wanted to get from you is you know one is for brands owned by companies which are massive since uh, you know this is also the age of startups and young entrepreneurs i'd love to get your perspective on how do small businesses or startups work to build brands on a limited budget so under duress we'll have to look at it in two parts one is the ones that are not being grown in the classical sense mm -hmm. but driven by growing subscription base to enhance the valuation that's a gain mm -hmm. that's not a thought through wise marketing process or thinking at all right it's a completely different way of looking at life uh everyone is in a tearing hurry the brand is literally being shoved into your face mm -hmm. and additional carrots are thrown at you in terms of promotions and 10 minute delivery and this that and the other mm -hmm. but not all of it is contributing to a great customer experience or leaving the brand sparkling more than before mm -hmm. it's not it's only making it more available and more faster and more cheaper and all of that right so uh, keep let's keep that aside because that's a reality of this era and it will mm. let's see how it pans out but in a classical sense whether it's a startup whether it's a small business and i don't know uh, despite how things change who are you what do you stand for why do you do what you do mm. are not things that are going to go out of fashion correct so the other point to be noted for a small business is how he chooses to not just design his business point mm -hmm. point of purchase but how he chooses to do business with what principles with what values with what customer service is also building a brand mm -hmm. the notion that only when you physically advertise and put out some funny message there that's advertising that's not true If I go to a neighborhood store, new one that is that might have come up, 
and I find it to be a breath of fresh air because their whole approach to customers is different and they do something very wonderfully nice, which I haven't found anywhere else. Hmm. Uh, they've etched in my memories forever. So right. they, they've built a brand. So hmm. uh, a little bit of patience in the early part to carefully build the brand so that existential discussions like what is this brand, what does it stand for, does not creep into the future. Mm. You have to get that out of the way right. and spend most of your energy building on that premise. Mm. Well said, well said. My next question uh, is uh, relating to human behavior. And I know that you do a lot of work or you have done a lot of work on human behavior. Uh, when it comes to any creative work that in your agency is doing, how important is employee engagement in the whole brand building process and what is one of some surprising insights about human behavior that you have encountered? So, uh, when it comes to delivering a superior superlative customer experience, unless the entire value chain is engaged, mm. uh, we don't see results. So, if a company says we are going to do hundreds of things to become and be seen as customer centric, then anyone and everyone on behalf of the company who interacts with stakeholders has to be customer centric in their thought and process and activity. Mm -hmm. It's not just the marketing department or the sales department's problem. Right. Which means that it's the right thing to do to engage everyone in the process mm. because it's a fundamental truth of team building. Mm. If half the team is kept in the dark and the other half has some ambiguous inputs, they don't move together like a disciplined battalion. Mm. They only move forward when everyone is inspired by the same thinking. They have a sense of what is going on. Uh, I mean, to that extent, one must call out, you know, many company offices, you go to the reception and there is a, a complex jargon-filled write-up or a para in the name of mission statement, mm -hmm. something is put up on the reception. Yeah. And my simple view on it is if your average employee at any level, if he reads it, and gets a sense of what is he expected to therefore do tomorrow morning, mm. then you're home and dry. Correct. If not, it's just someone's checklist item and it's done and over with. Mm. So employee engagement, frankly, for mature brands and for brands that understand the magic of getting a whole team working in unison is frankly not an option. Mm not an option. It is an integral and fundamental part of how you do business, how you grow business, how you manage teams. When it comes to consumer, the whole human behavior factor is huge. Right. Uh, huge. I mean, I'll give you one fascinating example done a few years ago. I'm not... Uh, there are too many examples and too many agencies involved. Mm -hmm. That's the only mm -hmm. reason I'm not mentioning which agency yeah. and what work. But there was a exercise done uh, about calling out domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And now in human behavior sense, anecdotally, most people know that if in your vicinity, there is a domestic violence issue happening, mm -hmm. typical reaction is to not do anything about it because a, you don't know how those people will react if you were to go and talk to them. B, you don't know what is leading to this, so therefore you're not in a best position to act on it. Mm. Uh, you're also surprisingly worried about the fact that you'll be told it's none of your business. Mm. So for all these reasons, there is serious inertia displayed and no one does anything. They right. just uh, express uh, dejection about the fact that this is going on, but they don't do anything. This campaign to gently change, now this, this shows a very fine-tuned understanding of what can be consumers, what 
what can be done to push consumers gently but realistically to make a difference right you go to the rooftops and tell them don't worry we are there go to the police that's not going to motivate them so they did this wonderful campaign where they said that if you hear noises coming from your neighboring house or flat mm. or apartment and there is reason to believe that it's a domestic violence situation ring the doorbell and run away mm. all right so they did a whole campaign around ringing the doorbell and running away it is mm. not a sign of cowardice but it is saying send a loud message to that man that someone is noting this and listening okay. to this and they know this Mm. So if you think it's happening within the four walls of your house, you can't get away scot free. Mm. If three times the bell rings in the next fifteen minutes, a very very good chance that he will uh, change his views and start getting a little scared and worried about people around him. Mm. Uh, so th that that's I think a great uh, human behavior. Very very interesting. What an amazing or, uh, stuff. the other certain certain human behavior change by leveraging tangible truths so for a brand called egon religare years ago we had done a campaign mm -hmm. which which basically was based on the fact that while most people take some sort of life insurance the quantum is so insignificant that in times of need it makes no difference mm -hmm. so they called it come insurance lene ki bimari mm. <laughs> and they build a whole narrative around it yeah saying that i asked you do you have a insurance policy and you said yes and then now i'm asking you how much and you're saying a lakh mm. and i said imagine 15 years from now you need to use it with the way inflation is going do you know what that lakh is going to buy you so what gives you the idea that you are in a good place yeah do something about it and understand it better well said well said so uh, well, both of them were very interesting campaigns but i have time for one more question for you mish yeah. and i want aunt you to look at your crystal ball and say looking ahead what do you see as the next big trends in brand building well i uh, i'm not a seer in that sense so i i i won't really know mm -hmm. but uh, my sense is unimaginative and response as it may sound is that things have a way of coming a full circle in most endeavors and from a long time where people were passionate about what brands do and their function it slowly moved into what people chose to call emotional advertising which again is a bit of a joke because a communication will not pursue it if it is not touching your emotions mm. emotions is not a extra ingredient it is integral yeah uh, so it moved into that for the longest time in the recent past everyone has been uh, fascinated by purpose driven advertising mm. which in some cases work but quite honestly consumers stakeholders everyone are interested in what that product and brand does they are not interested on your world view on climate change and whatever mm. unless you are in a category that supports it right so from all this and even now some of the best advertising from around the world creates a scintillating role for the brand it does mm. not move away from the brand and give you some digressing story right so i i i i think and i hope that once again with full force people will tell you brand story mm. and why you should bond with a certain brand and not with the others and choosing not to get bored it's like you may be doing a uh, advertising for a car brand for 20 years mm -hmm. or you might be doing advertising for a ketchup brand for 20 years mm -hmm. 
just because 20 years is a long time you have no business getting bored of setting up the commercial in the kitchen okay. because that's where the ketchup is hmm. a soap will be in the bathroom not on the top of a tree right so that's the whole creative challenge i mean there are creative stalwarts who've taken the same category and same thing and built it over a long 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 period of time by constantly reinventing themselves and finding mm. new angles to mm. how to pursue it mm. uh, so i'm i'm hoping that we come back to an era where we get real mm. uh, and not hide behind purpose hide behind some techno tools because it's possible because like someone said i'm interested whether the message touches me or not I am mm. not interested in knowing that the message was created by shooting with an underwater camera. Mm. I mean, yeah, okay, but what I'm seeing is what is important Correct. to me. Yeah. So I hope that's what uh, begins to happen. That's, because, yeah. Uh, strangely, although there are new things happening and the digital era and all of that, mm. to, together in an orchestrated fashion. it now gives us fresh ability and ammunition to mm. act out on all the classical principles of marketing much better than before mm. well so said delivering customer experience delivering mm. customer safety delivering whatever you any yeah. angle you take yeah your ability to do a great job of it is better today than it was before absolutely right and in that era it is a pity if you are going to digress and go elsewhere mm. not talk about a brand very well said Umesh, on that note, and your very powerful statement, the message is more interest, more important than the medium. Thank you so much for speaking to me about your own amazing journey. I have such a pleasure to realize. I should have found out earlier that you and I belong to the same uh, alma mater. Thank you for speaking to me at such length about communication, about branding, about marketing, and about human behavior. Thank you again for speaking to me, and good luck. Thank you so much, Ashutosh. It was a privilege and it was a delight to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Video Cast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.